on my friends? Hope you all are having an amazing day. It's shaping up to be a pretty good day out here in the shop with the RM. We're gonna be getting the brakes back together. Super excited about these things. It's been a lot of work into uh, these things between swapping parts for different bikes and custom pieces and all the coating. So it'll be worth it though. We're gonna start with the front brake system. We're gonna be using a Pro-X kit here. So the front master cylinder reload kit comes with all the seals to rebuild the stock piston. Start pulling this stuff off and you wanna make note of which direction the seals face. Now it looks like we have two different seals here. See one has a smaller diameter than the other. Looks like the smaller diameter seal went on this end here. Probably a little easier to use a pick or you could just cut it off. Just gonna have a little brake fluid here in the cap to help lubricate things as they go together. So these can be a little tight going on. Try not to use any tools on this when you're going on just to prevent from tearing that seal at all. Guess it's better to be tight than loose, huh? If you ever get lost as to the direction or orientation of all these parts, you can always pull up a parts diagram. I like to use Rocky Mountains. You just head over to the OEM parts section here and they have all the diagrams you can zoom in on and see exactly where the parts go. It goes spring end in first. Then we have a washer and a circlet. Now these can be pretty tricky going in just because there's not a whole lot of room here for that circlip. Looks like we're in the groove. Nope. One edge is poking out. If we push it in, it should snap in. There we go. Make sure this plunger is working right. Sweet. Now we just pop the rubber grommet in. All right, that's it for the front master. That was easy enough. Now we're gonna move on to front caliper. And once again, we are gonna be using a, another Pro-X kit here. There are two different thicknesses here. You can correspond that to the caliper. You can see which one goes where. And I don't believe they are directional. Yeah, it looks the same on either side. try to get these in without using any tools on them. They should just pop in by hand. And once you get these seals in, just make sure they're not twisted up. It happens pretty easily. Now we're ready for the pistons. Just pop in. Now we've got a little rubber grommet here. Sometimes you just gotta stuff it in the hole and hope it goes in. We're gonna need a little help on this one. A little dab of grease should do the trick. Get these caliper pins back into place. I want to use red Loctite on these. And of course the bleeder screw. Dude, I gotta buff that one out. It's looking a little crusty. She's as good as new now. Now for the caliper mount, we've got another pin here. Probably want to use red Loctite on that as well. As you notice, we got a Galfer caliper mount. We're gonna be using a little bit different front brake system on this bike. I'll show you a little bit later. We've got a few clips. Sometimes you can just bend these tabs back on the clips so that way they fit like new again. There we go. My only gripe about some of these caliper and master cylinder rebo kits, they don't come with these clips right here for the brake pads. Other than that, they're pretty complete. Another boot here on the caliper. Actually, you know what, before I do that, it's a good idea to pack these holes full of grease. When you slide the caliper and the mount together, that is where the caliper rides on. So you wanna have plenty of grease in here 
as well as in here. And that is where the mini grease gun comes in handy. All right, it looks like we're ready to slide these two pieces together. Might have got too much grease in there. It's almost like hydro locking. Take that bag, guys. You don't want to pack those things full. It'll hydro lock and you can't get your caliper on. All right, we'll give this another try. Another key to having a smooth working caliper is making sure these pins are either new or nice and clean. There's no corrosion or burrs on them. Got the freaking grease cream pie. Now we're gonna top it off with a pair of Pro-X brake pads. Pro-X has always been good stuff, right on par with OEM quality. This is an area where you don't wanna have grease or any oils. Oh, I'm going in backwards. Looks nice and fresh. Got the pin that holds it all together. These pins have some Loctite on them, as you can see, so they might be a little tough going in. And then on the CRF calipers, there's this little end cap that covers up that pin. By the way, these are actually CRF calipers and master cylinders that we have here. They're not the uh, original RM calipers, so that's why they might look a little different, but the process is pretty much the same across the board. So that is it for the front brake caliper and master cylinder. Just got to tie it together with a brake line. So I decided to go with the caliper for the brake lines and the brake rotors. So this is a braided brake line. It's actually for CRF. Well, it only makes sense we're using CRF brakes on here, so might as well use a brake line. But on the RM, it'll change it from uh, the old style RM routing. Got a crush washer that goes on either side. That is looking fresh. Not gonna lie, I did repaint my banjo bolts instead of buying new ones. Gotta save money where you can. Front system is complete. About time we mount it up, but got a small problem here. I'm gonna need to get some bars on here. Got a tusk bar with no crossbar or a rental with a crossbar. But both of these are kind of scraped up. I'm gonna figure out how I can refinish them and make them look better. Almost kind of thinking of brushing these. I've never actually brushed a set of handlebars, but might as well try it out, see how it works. To test to see if they're bent, just have them on a flat surface here and kind of push on the corners here. Tusk bars have a little bend in them. You can see there's a gap on this end when you push it down. Renthals are a little bit more bent. I mean, they're not bent to the point where you probably notice it on the bike, but I do want to see if I can straighten them just to get them perfect. I'm going to pull this crossbar off of here. Might make it a little easier to straighten out. Crazy, I've been trying to find a new set of handlebars and everyone's all sold out, just like grips for whatever reason. It's hard to get grips right now. Oh, and two-stroke pipes, that's the worst. Freaking Loctite to the max. So let's pop her in the vise. I don't know if these soft drives are actually gonna work or not. If you ever wanna do some motos on a workbench. So with this side of the bars bent back, I'm gonna have to push them forward a little bit. Dude, look how much flex is in these handlebars. It's crazy how much bars actually flex. We'll seat it up this time and see if that helps at all. able to have a little better luck with just using a inner tube here on the vise and applying some heat to it and seem to straighten out pretty good it ain't perfect there's a little gap here still but it's a heck of a lot better now obviously if your bars are just mangled I probably wouldn't recommend trying to bend them back but just a little tweak works perfectly fine but now I'm gonna try to clean these up. They're all scraped up. If I remove all of this lettering here, I'm not gonna be able to see where the center of the bar is. So I'm thinking I'm gonna take a little Dremel and make some marks right here so that way I can line up the bars later. So I couldn't find a cutoff wheel that was thin enough. I'm just gonna actually use a punch here. 
make a little mark right where there's existing markings. All right, let's see what we can do about brushing this thing up. Oh, you can see where the marking is. That'll work perfect. Might actually look pretty cool. So we got her all brushed out. It actually doesn't look too bad. Just a little inconsistent in areas like right here. So I'm gonna take a hand pad and smooth all that out, get it looking consistent. I guess we'll see once I get these on the bike if it's a no or a go. It's kind of different. Might like it, who knows. Actually ain't too shabby. It's kind of got a lot of colors going on right here. I think if I do these black to match the crossbar, that would look good, but I don't know, what do you guys think? I might just start a trend here with brushed handlebars. Kind of reminds me of the 90s, doesn't it? So now we've got this beauty to bolt up. I'm always a big fan of these Gelfer wave rotors. They just look factory in my opinion. I'm gonna pull the wheel off and get this baby mounted up. You definitely want to run red Loctite on these bolts here. They come loose. Not going to be a good day. It's pretty sick looking. I don't know, that just looks factory to me, doesn't it? Got the wave rotor, got the yellow wheels. I just picked up this uh, Bolt Pro Pack, RM. See what we got in here. Got all sorts of goodies. Look at this, we even got freaking Ronnie Mac on the front here. If you guys know who that actually is, drop a comment down below. It looks like these should be the correct bolts the front caliper we can get this baby mounted up looks like we have a stud that's a little too long here on the carrier I'm gonna have to trim that down so that way it doesn't hit the rotor see how this thing clears oh yeah it's pretty much flush Looks like we are having a little bit of drag on this rotor. Hmm, wonder what that's all about. Pad is a little sucked into the rotor. It's always fun running into little issues like this. Let's see how that gets kind of bulged up right there and it won't go on any further. Looks like we're able to get it in far enough now. I think it was just a case of me getting a little carried away with a the lube there. Happens often though, just ask my wife. Yeah, it definitely sounds a little crusty, but it spins a lot smoother now. That might just be new rotor, new pads. The forks and the wheel aren't quite aligned yet, so that could possibly play into it. As soon as I get these banjo bolts tightened down, I can fill the system full of fluid and bleed it out. And on this front brake, you wanna basically grease everything that moves or has a contact point on it. And goes in right here and throw a little grease on either side of where the lever contacts the master. Honestly, all this stuff gets covered in dirt anyways, but gotta have grease on it for it to move smoothly. So on these brake lever bolts, you wanna just snug them up. If they're too tight, like that, you'll notice they're sticky. So just basically tighten them until they are smooth like that. And then you got a nut that goes on the bottom side and prevents, get out of your fly, prevents that bolt from backing out. Now we're gonna pump these brakes full of fluid. So we've got a syringe here. 
going to stick the end into the bottle of brake fluid. Make sure the plunger is all the way down. We're going to suck a bunch of fluid up into the syringe. Get as much in there as you can. So we're going to loosen up the bleeder screw on the caliper. I'm going to wiggle the hose on. Get this clamp secured into place. And you want to tilt it up and get all this air moving toward the top of the syringe so that way you're not pushing any air in. And then if you come up to the top here, make sure the cap is off. And then we're just gonna start pumping brake fluid into the system. We're gonna keep an eye up top here on the master. Make sure you don't overfill it. So this is basically adding in fluid without adding in a bunch of air. So we'll have you keep an eye on that fluid up there. Tighten this bleeder screw up as soon as you can. We're just gonna leave the syringe on the system for now. I'm gonna pump this thing up, get some pressure going. It also helps as you're adding fluid to kind of flick the line. That'll loosen up some of the air bubbles. And then obviously with a new system, you wanna look at all the banjo bolts and seals, making sure nothing's leaking there. So I'm gonna zip tie this bleeder upright. Help keep it into place. And we're just gonna have to manually bleed out these brakes. Pump it a few times, hold it, crack the bleeder. You can see some air coming out of there. Inevitably, you're gonna have some air trapped in the system here, somewhere in the line or the, the caliper, especially when you're starting from a dry system. Starting to get some pressure built up there. So we're getting a little bit low on the fluid up here. I'm gonna come down to the caliper, crack this open, pump some more fluid into it. Gonna pump it back up. Not a whole lot of air coming out anymore. It's feeling a lot better. Well, that's feeling pretty good right there. It's gonna top off this master cylinder and we can put the cap on. Now there's a little handy tool I've got here from Motion Pro. This goes right onto the caliper, right onto the uh, bleeder screw. And it's got a one-way valve in it. It's basically put it on, crack it open, run a hose off the end of it. And you don't have to continually crack that bleeder screw. It just pushes fluid and air out. So if you guys are having trouble with bleeding out your brakes, give one of these a try. And if you can't get it, you know, if you've bled it time and time again, zip tie your brake lever to your handlebars overnight. And that'll push all the air to the top of the system and it'll allow it to escape out the top. So this little bleeder tool you can snag at Rocky Mountain. I'll have it linked down below. And the syringe, you can just build your own from a hardware store. You can get the uh, the hose and the clamp and everything. I do have them available on the website and I'll also have that link down below as well. We're gonna just go ahead and top off the master cylinder here. That's about good. Pretty simple colors on this one, just brushed and black. All right, that's it for the front brake system. Pretty stoked on how this is looking. I'm actually kind of digging these bars too. I might just leave them brushed like that. But now we're gonna move on to the rear brake system. So for the rear brake system, it's pretty much gonna be the same process as the front. So I'm just gonna breeze on through it. But before I get started with this, I figured I'd give you a little update on the bike building contest I run every year. That's coming up pretty quick. We have until November 1st and so, you guys better get on it, better start looking on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace for some beat up old bikes. If you wanna find out more info on the contest, I'll have a link down below in the description. And also while you're over on that page, you can sign up for an email update on the contest as soon as it starts. But let's uh, dig into these brakes. Master cylinder is all done. I'm gonna move on to the caliper now. I noticed this piston for the caliper is a little grungy looking. I'm gonna see if I can polish it up on the bench grinder. 
Damn, dude. Damn, Daniel, back at it with the freshly polished piston. In case you were wondering what wheel and compound I used on that piston to get it so nice, it was a number three polishing wheel and a white compound. Worked pretty sweet. So we're gonna be busting out another Pro X kit here for the caliper. Looks like we've got everything. How sick is this brake system, dog? <laughs> sick enough? Good. Some freaking mouse hunting going on in here. He's <laughs> huge! <laughs> <laughs> that bitch! Dude, I knew that was gonna happen. He's gone now. I'm not too good at hunting. <laughs> Dude, that fucker was quick. something else and back to our regular scheduled programming we're gonna get these bad boys mounted up actually I'm gonna need to get the rear wheel off of here and get the rotor and sprocket on got another beautiful Galfer wave rotor here Got a black Pro X sprocket. It is a 49 tooth. Love the look of these things as well. It really goes with the color theme we're going with. Sprocket bolts and nuts from Pro X as well. And these nuts have a nylon locking washer, so no need for Loctite on these. Now the sprocket bolts are one bolt you do not want to come loose. It'll ruin your hub in a hurry. Torque spec on them is 23 foot pounds. Might as well torque the rotor bolts as well. These are seven foot pounds. Now we're gonna see how this puppy lines up on the bike. Do that don't freaking stay on there or shit. Yeah, we're a little bit loose on there. What the heck's going on with this? I wonder if I grabbed the wrong caliper mount. I might have. So here's the caliper from a 02. Yeah, that fits a lot better on there. So I am gonna have to clean up this mount, Cerakote it, and uh, swap it out. I didn't realize those were gonna be different. So as I was cleaning up this caliper mount, I noticed one of the ears for the rotor guard was broken right here. And I was kind of thinking maybe I should just replace this mount, but honestly, a lot of people just do away with the guards anyways, the uh, caliper guard, the rotor guard. And if you look at the new KTMs, like what we've got here, you see they don't even have a caliper or rotor guard 
right from the factory. So shouldn't be a too big of an issue to eliminate those guards. So I'm just gonna take a cutoff wheel, trim these mounts right off, and then an angle grinder to smooth them out. Trimmed up pretty nicely. I actually think that looks a lot better too. There's way less brackets hanging off of it and now I don't have to get any guards for it too. Can't even tell any of those little ears were even there. Smoothed out really nicely. So while I was coating the carrier, I figured I'd do the crossbar mounts as well, but let's get this swapped out. See how it fits up this time around, dialed. I forget how to put a bolt in. Hold up, something ain't right. I say it. Hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. It's getting real. Wow, it actually fits. Really wish I could find a locking nut for this. Castle nuts are kind of ugly. It's tough getting these things on without scratching the crap out of everything. That's pretty proper. Y'all ready for this? I'm gonna put a damn bar pad on. <laughs> So this is what I've really been waiting for, the custom clevis that Nick printed up on the 3D printer. So obviously this is just plastic for a prototype, so there's no threads. But we can get a pretty good idea of how this is going to work when we do an aluminum one. Pedal height looks good. Dude, that actually lines up perfectly. You freaking nailed it, Nick. Yeah, it's perfectly straight this way. How does it look from the back? Yeah, I couldn't get any better from the back here. It's straight on. Jeez, dude, are you some sort of engineer or what? So obviously with this being a prototype, we made it a little thicker. We're gonna slim it down for the actual aluminum version. I was kind of afraid of the piston kind of going on an angle because this thing is offset. Obviously it comes back a little bit, but it looks like it's working perfectly up and down. Now it's my favorite task of all, bleeding some brakes. Got all of our banjo bolts tight. I think we're ready to pump this thing full. I'm gonna try something a little bit different this time around. I'm gonna integrate this bleeder I was talking about earlier with the syringe. So the bleeder has a little wrench on it. You can loosen up the bleeder screw. We're gonna go ahead and pump the pedal up front and you'll be able to see the air coming out through here. See any more air coming out. I'm gonna tighten this up and see how our pressure is at the pedal. Not a ton of pressure up here. I'm gonna crack this open again. Starting to get some pressure up front here. Oh shit. All right, the pedal's feeling pretty good. I end up just completely destroying our test piece here, but at least we're able to confirm that it lined up. Everything works good. I just blew out the hole here. Not the first time that's happened. All right, bleeding is done. These bolts are a little crusty. I might have to replate them later on. These bolts are super soft, so you want to be really careful not to snap them off. Well, 
Well guys, that's about all I have for today. Made a lot of progress on the bike. Really happy with how it's looking. Those brakes and rotors on there just look wicked, but really excited to see what we have for the uh, upcoming videos. So make sure you stay tuned. We're gonna be working on the carburetor, subframe, airbox. We still have wiring, cables, list goes on. Stay tuned, we've got a lot more on the way. Thanks for watching.